Everybody, Jim here. Welcome back for an extra special episode of More Games, where usually on this show we take a look at a half dozen games that I've been playing and enjoying recently. But today, very special treat, we're actually going to take a look at 13 games I've been playing recently in the form of the TMNT Kawabunga Collection. Uh, which, as you can see here, I guess this actually was not released in Japan, so I had to pick up an imported North American copy, but I've been having a ton of fun with this collection, so that's what we're going to do. We are going to take a look at every single game included in the Kawabunga collection. We're going to be absolutely up to our ears in Turtles. So, sit back, relax, grab your favorite slice of pizza, and let's get green. Let's get started with the game that everyone played and enjoyed back in the day if you spent a significant amount of time at any bowling alley or skating rink, and that's the original TMNT arcade game. And you notice I didn't say arcade, that's because there weren't really any arcades where I grew up. Just the odd collection of arcade games really just sort of randomly scattered around places kids might go to hang out and have fun. So it was once in a blue moon that I actually got to play TMNT Arcade, but it was always a treat because I was a huge TMNT fan as a kid. And I have to say that playing this game on your TV lacks a lot of the quote-unquote magic the arcade machine had, but it's still really fun. Also, I have to say that I was playing single player when I recorded all this footage, but obviously any of these games are more fun with multiplayer. This game in particular is a lot more fun with other people because as a single player game, it's very unfair, but I guess that's to be expected. It's still classic, mindless beat-em-up fun though, and the graphics and sound are still quite nice today. For 1989, if I was in an arcade and I had a choice between this and Final Fight or Double Dragon 2, I probably would have been playing Turtles. And its inclusion in this collection is greatly appreciated. And the only thing that really hurts it is the fact that a much better Turtles arcade game is also included. But for what it's worth, the original TMNT arcade is still a lot of fun, especially if you have a few friends to join you. And I don't think I'll be going back to the skating ring for any more birthday parties anytime soon, so this is the next best thing. Now, for that much better TMNT arcade game I was referring to, it's none other than Turtles in Time, which I was stoked to play in this collection because as a kid I actually never played this in an actual arcade setting. It wasn't until many years later that I gave it a try on emulation, which wasn't so great really, which I didn't say this before, but the emulation here is, as, you know, as far as I can tell, really good. I'm not the type of person that counts frames or anything, but all of the games in this collection play really well, except that I haven't tried the online gameplay yet, so I'm not sure if the crippling slowdown I heard about has been fixed or not, but more specifically to this game, it is much better than its arcade predecessor in terms of visuals, sound design, and especially gameplay. Turtles in Time plays a lot smoother and faster and throws more enemies at you at one time, 
And even as a single player game, I still had a lot of fun playing through this one, but of course it gets even better with two to four players. For years, I had only played the console port of Turtles in Time, so going back and playing the arcade version reminded me of the pros and cons of that port, but uh, we'll get to that a little later. I will say, though, that the soundtrack for Turtles in Time is classic, no matter what, and the visuals are very vibrant and colorful, but the quips from the Turtles can get a little grating after a while, but it's, yeah, it's nothing too terrible. Also, I missed some of the bosses from the console game. This, this game features no Rat King, no Bebop or Rocksteady. Instead of Slash, we get Submit Man, which isn't a great replacement if you ask me, but minor complaints aside, now, this game is classic. It's crazy fun, definitely the best Turtles arcade game, and it was a pleasure to play such an awesome conversion of it. This is definitely one of the big selling points of this collection. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, our four reptilian heroes, have overcome the arc villain Shredder. Next up is the classic TMNT Turtles in Time on the SNES, which is one of my favorite games ever, and I feel like I've, I've talked about this game plenty on this channel. I even have a full review of it, which I've either already posted or will post soon, so I don't have too much more than that to say, but I will say that for a long time, I felt like this was the best console beat-em-up ever made. I, of course, love games like Streets of Rage and Final Fight, Double Dragon, but the combination of fast-paced, fun gameplay and lots of different enemies and more stages and boss battles than the arcade game and one of my favorite game soundtracks ever put this game above all of its peers in my mind. This is a game that I rented over and over again and would beat multiple times over the course of a weekend for more weekends than I can count, and even now, I'm still not bored with this game, and probably never will be. It's one of the few beat-em-ups that when I start playing it, I always finish it. I can be finished in about half an hour or so, but it's just about the most fun 30 minutes you could have on the SNES, and its inclusion here is greatly appreciated. Again, another great reason to own this collection. Single player, co-op, doesn't really matter. This game is still crazy fun, and I'm sure I'll be beating it over and over again, as is tradition. So that's it. This game rules. Play it, and play it again, because it's awesome. Next up, we move to another great game, and that's Hyperstone Heist, a.k.a. Return of the Shredder. And again, this is one I don't need to say too much about, because I already did a full review of it a couple of years ago. And I even retread it in my Turtles in Time review, but I can say that there has always been some debate amongst fans if this is the better game or if Turtles in Time is better, because they do have a lot in common, but it's never really been a question for me. Turtles in Time is the better game, in my opinion. The main advantage of Hyperstone Heist is that there is a dedicated run button, which is very convenient and does help to speed up the gameplay even further. Uh, but aside from that, the core gameplay is basically the same, and the visuals are very nice. The soundtrack sounds great coming from the Genesis sound trip, but... Where this game falls flat is that there are fewer stages and some of them tend to drag on a little bit too long and there are far fewer boss battles and I don't care what you say the inclusion of Tatsu is not sufficient to make up for the lack of all those other bosses and then stage four is a boss rush featuring the same three bosses you just beat so this game does start to get just a bit boring at that point where I feel like Turtles in Time never gets boring because 
the mix of different stages and bosses keeps things interesting. Still, this is a great game, and it's nice to be able to play it alongside its SNES counterpart to compare and contrast. But yeah, another good reason to own this collection, especially if you were a Genesis kid back in the day and you have a soft spot for TMNT, the Hyperstone Heist. Great game. Next up is the original TMNT for the NES, and we have now come to the first game of this collection that I officially don't like, and it's something that's been tread over countless times on YouTube, so I won't waste anyone's time by like trying to give a complete analysis of this game or anything. I'll just say that the soundtrack is pretty good, the visuals aren't so bad, all things considered. It definitely bears all the marks of a Konami game, but the gameplay sucks. At this point, there were some amazing action platformers on the NES, and a Turtles game that played closer to something like Ninja Gaiden would have been really cool, but instead it's it's this. Whatever this is. I know some people like it and say its reputation as a shitty game is unearned. I am not one of those people. Uh, it's not the worst game on the NES by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a game I don't have much time for. TMNT works way better as a beat em up and we'll just leave it at that. Next up, we have TMNT 2, the arcade game, and this is a much better NES Turtles game, just simple, mindless fun. Pick a turtle, beat up a bunch of bad guys, two players, pretty decent visuals, and good sound design. The only thing that kind of sucks, though, is that when I'd play this game on an NES or Famicom, the power attack that you can do by hitting the A and B buttons at the same time, for whatever reason, it only works some of the time here. I could hit it every time on the NES, but not on the Switch. So maybe it's the Pro Controller I'm using, but aside from that, still a great game and a great port. The only other thing against it, like with the arcade game that came before it, there's a much better 8-bit Turtles game, in my opinion, that followed this one. But for what it's worth, I still had fun playing through TMNT 2, even if the controls weren't exactly perfect. If this is a game you grew up playing, you were lucky because I was unfortunately saddled with the first NES Turtles game as a kid, and within like 20 minutes of booting it up, I was, you know, back to playing outside again. Anyways, TMNT 2, still an awesome game. Alright, now we have what I think is the best 8-bit Turtles game, and I don't think that's a controversial statement to make, considering two of the other games are just bad, generally. And the other beat-em-up is good, but not quite as good. Manhattan Project is a longer game, it has way more boss battles, and a bigger variety of stages, it's more abilities for the Turtles, uh, the graphics are nicer, and the soundtrack is arguably better, too. So all around, this game is an improvement over TMNT 2 and miles better 
than the first game, and Tournament Fighters, which we'll look at later. I have to imagine the only reason this game wasn't as popular as TMNT 2 is because of the timing of its release, because it would have been around the same time as Turtles in Time, and gamers were moving on to the SNES, and this game doesn't hold a candle to Turtles in Time, obviously. So I suppose it was overlooked at the time. I myself didn't play it until about 10 years ago when I was getting more into Famicom games and realized what a cool game it is anyway. TMNT 3, The Manhattan Project, the best 8-bit Turtles game, and still a lot of fun. Alright, that's the halfway point of the video. Seven games down, six to go, but first we're going to take a little bit of a halftime break, so check this out. We'll be right back. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will return after these messages. We now return to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And we're back, and we're going to get to the next six games on the Cowbunga Collection. But just first, as a little aside, uh, I thought it was kind of interesting um, playing Turtles in Time again, the SNES version. Uh, it's still my favorite console beat em up ever, even though I can admit that. There are modern beat-em-ups that surpass it in every way possible. In particular, I'm a big fan of Shredder's Revenge. I think Shredder's Revenge is, uh, for all intents and purposes, the best beat-em-up I've ever played. I've played all the modern stuff, Streets of Rage 4 and River City Girls and everything. I just had an immense amount of fun with Shredder's Revenge and loved the, just the graphics. Uh, the soundtrack was outstanding. So even though I can say Shredder's Revenge a better game than Turtles in Time it, on a technical level. Pretty much any kind of metric you can go by, it's a better game, but for whatever reason, you could say it's nostalgia. Turtles in Time, still my favorite console beat-em-up ever, but what do you think? What's the best console beat-em-up ever? Let me know down in the comments, and uh, since we're on the topic, Turtles in Time, Hyperstone Heist, uh, which do you prefer? I said it already, I'm a Turtles in Time guy. Even though I do still really like Hyperstone Heist, I think it's an amazing game, but I, I just feel like Turtles in Time offers so much more. But then some people absolutely swear by Hyperstone Heist, and that's their, their favorite game. So yeah, let me know down in the comments, what is the best 16-bit Turtles beat-em-up? Uh, because I don't want to say it's divisive, because it's not really a big deal, but people have their own different opinions, and I'd like to hear what yours are anyway. That's an aside. Let's get back to the next six games on this collection. Back to the turtle action. All right, now we move on to the Game Boy games. We'll save the fighters for last and I never played any of the Game Boy games until playing this collection, so I can't say if it's better or not than playing the original versions because I had a Game Boy as a kid and had a few games for it and it was okay for car rides, but if there was a TV and a console available, that's what I was doing. Anyway, Fall of the Foot Clan. This game is okay. It's a side-scrolling, not beat em up just a side-scrolling action game I guess all of the enemies die in one hit except for the boss battles so I guess you could say it's like a very slow playing Ninja Gaiden or something like that there's not much in the way of platforming but there's a bit and the sound design is pretty good 
And the character sprites are huge, which is why I guess it plays so slow. So I don't have too much to say about it, which you'll, you'll notice that when I talk about uh, these Game Boy games. They're really simple and playing them for the first time now after playing all the arcade Turtles games and the 16-bit games and Shredder's Revenge. It's, it's hard to be impressed by these games, but for what it's worth, Fall of the Foot Clan is a decently fun little game. Actually, uh, now that I think of it, I, uh, I probably should have played this in handheld mode. Anyway, uh, Fall of the Foot Clan. It's pretty cool. Next up, TMNT back from the sewers. And I have less to say about this game than the previous one because honestly it's almost identical to Follow the Foot Clan except I'd say it's a bit of an upgrade. The visuals are a little better, the sound design is about the same, and it feels like it plays just a bit faster. And I think you don't have the slide ability in the first game which is pretty nifty here. Though in Fall of the Foot Clan, now that I think about it, you could throw little ninja stars while crouching, uh, which was pretty cool, even though I don't think the Ninja Turtles ever actually threw ninja stars at anyone. Anyway, uh, back from the sewers, uh, a fun little game, but again, in the same collection as Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist and all of that, uh, there's not much reason to play it unless there's some nostalgia for it, or uh, if you're trying it out for the first time like I am. Uh, again, probably would have been better playing it in handheld mode. Still fun for a playthrough, though. Uh, at least once before you're back to playing Turtles in Time again. Now we come to the last of the three Game Boy games included in this collection, and that is Radical Rescue, which I would say is the best of the Game Boy games included here. And it's another that I'd never played before, so I didn't know what to expect. I thought it would probably be another action platformer, uh, but I did not expect that it would be more of a Metroid-style platformer where you have a huge map to navigate through and you'll need to find keys and all the turtles to access uh, different areas of the map. You start out with just Michelangelo and you have to find the other turtles and they all have their own unique special abilities. It's honestly pretty ambitious and a much bigger game than I was anticipating. I have not finished it yet as Metroid style games tend to be. It's a little confusing, but uh, it is fun and a well-designed game uh, that with some decent visuals and uh, sound, all that stuff, all things considered. Again, in my opinion, the best of the Game Boy Turtles games, and one I definitely plan to return to and possibly finish it, uh, assuming I don't get too frustrated and once again just go back to playing Turtles in Time, which is honestly the most likely of scenarios. Are you sensing a theme here?
now we come to the Tournament Fighters games, and we'll get started with the NES game. And I'll just say about all of them that Street Fighter 2, these games definitely are not. Konami just didn't have the knack for making fighting games that uh, Capcom and SNK did, but uh, these games are not all bad. And I'd actually say of the three of them, I enjoyed the NES game the second most. It's obviously a bit clunky. Uh, or a lot clunky, really, and only makes use of two face buttons. But it's still pretty playable and decently fun, but it's also really difficult. Uh, and maybe it's just me and my poor skills or something, but I had kind of a hard time pulling off special moves. Uh, except for when I was playing as Shredder. For whatever reason, I was doing pretty well with Shredder. Uh, he's quite the badass in this game, and he has Terry Bogard's Power Wave and uh, Kinshiro's Killing Blow from Fist of the North Star, uh, so that's pretty cool. Also, the graphics and sound are actually pretty damn good, uh, which is to be expected, I guess, as I think this game was released in, like, 1993 or 94, uh, so not really any mysteries left to developing NES games at that point. Uh, anyway... Uh, this game is a fun little distraction, and not much more. Not a bad game, though. Next up, we have the Genesis Tournament Fighters game, and this is definitely the worst of the three fighting games, and honestly, probably the worst game in this collection, because it plays like shit. It's clunky and awkward and really difficult and just not fun to play. Uh, I will say that I actually do kind of like the visuals. I like the kind of weird look of the characters, uh, and I like the backgrounds of the stages, even though they are really lacking in animation. The Dimension X designs are at least pretty cool looking, and the cutscenes look pretty cool too. So visually, uh, not so bad, but the sound design sucks. There's no catchy music to speak of. The voices are all, like, muffled, which uh, I think this is the only game in this collection that I can say the sound sucks because TMNT games uh, pretty much always had good music, at least, but it's really lacking here. So yeah, bad gameplay, bad sound design, it really ruined this game for me, which uh, is disappointing because it's not hard to imagine a decent Turtles fighting game on the Genesis, but alas, uh, this is not that. Not at all. It was bad then, and it's bad now, but luckily there's also a much better... 16-bit TMNT fighter here for those of us who like a good brawler. Finally, we come to the best of the TMNT fighters, even though it's honestly still not that great. Uh, but that's the SNES version of Tournament Fighters, which, while still not holding a candle to Street Fighter 2, is way better than its Genesis counterpart. It plays a lot better, with more responsive controls, and a more manageable difficulty, though it's still admittedly plays a bit stiff, but it's nothing that ruins the game or anything. Again, light years better than the Genesis version, and I also prefer the roster here, even though uh, there's no Casey Jones to play as. He only makes a cameo in one of the stages, I think, but uh, the visuals here are much better. This is a much more colorful game, and there's a lot more detail and animation and all of the backgrounds. The story is admittedly not as cool as the one in the Genesis version, with this game focusing on a televised fighting tournament. 
uh, which I get that the name of the game is Tournament Fighters, but the plots about the turtles and their allies being lured into Dimension X to fight evil versions of themselves is definitely cooler uh, than what we got here. However, the soundtrack here, way better than the Genesis game. It's more in line with the kind of high energy music you'd expect from a Turtles game. So the gameplay is decent, the visuals are really nice, and the soundtrack is great too, making it the best Turtles fighter in my book, even though it's uh, not a very high bar to begin with. Uh, TMNT Tournament Fighters on the SNES is nevertheless pretty damn cool. All right, there you go, everybody. All 13 games on the almighty Cowabunga collection. Uh, for the most part, really awesome collection. What do you think? Uh, did you pick up uh, the Cowabunga collection? What did you think of, uh, what are your favorite games on here maybe? What do you think of it as a collection as a whole? I heard some people saying this, this is like the best game compilation ever, but then other people were like, not even close. It's Atari 50 or, or whatever, other game collections out there. Personally, I really did enjoy this collection, even though um, in my opinion, obviously, there's some cannon fodder on here. Like I said, I'm not a fan of the original NES Turtles game. Um, that the, the Genesis Tournament Fighters game, while it kind of looks cool, uh, I, I like some things about it aesthetically. It's really horrible playing game. So there, there's some games on here that uh, they, you know, they're not any good, I guess I'll just say. But then some of these are, are like just like some of the best, most fun beat em ups ever made. So I don't know. It's a, uh, a mixed bag, if you will. So what do you think of the Cowabunga Collection? And uh, hey, while we're at it, what's your favorite Turtles game ever made? Because some people will say it's the arcade game, or Turtles in Time, or Hyperstone Heist. I'm sure there are even fans out there of the more modern Turtles games, the uh, 3D beat em ups, or the movie based on, like, the, uh, the game based on uh, the uh, CG movies, or maybe the Nickelodeon show, or something like that. I don't know, could be anything. I'm not a huge fan of those games, but that's just one man's opinion. Anyway, that's going to do it. I hope you all enjoy this special turtle edition of more games, and I do hope to see you on the next one. So take care, everybody. Goodbye.